Taylor Swift just had a concert in London where she led an audience of about 88,000 fans scream the line F the patriarchy in the middle of her song All Too Well. And I reposted this video and I said, lady, you are a billionaire, get your head checked because I'm sorry, uh, in a patriarchal world, would we really see some woman as successful as Taylor Swift thriving mm -hmm. like we do? That doesn't make sense to me just on its face. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, this kind of exploded. A bunch of people joined in the conversation and, you know, predictably conservatives found a new opportunity to rag on Taylor Swift and the Swifties. Mm -hmm. And I guess that they're saying you can't be a Swifty and conservative at the same time because she is promoting feminism to her audience mm -hmm. in a very palpable way. Let's look at the video though. Okay. Here we go. Here we go just, just in full context, okay? Cause she's not leading a chant or anything. It's in the middle of her song. Okay, here we go. That it? That's the line? That's it. That's it? That's, That's it. the line? And she throws her hands up the so everyone knows it's time to scream and they're not just singing along to the song, okay? This is what got to me. Okay. All of these Swifties were saying, well, you don't know the context is that this is actually a song lyric about a keychain that says F the patriarchy on it and it's just a funny, silly little line. But I just think that's really obtuse because clearly... Taylor has chosen to make this a special moment. She, mm -hmm. she curates these moments in her tour that are special for her fans and they know that it's coming up. They were all prepared for it. And they are screaming that specific line, that specific phrase, mm -hmm. because they agree with the message of that phrase, mm -hmm. not because it's a silly line that they find funny. I mean, it depends. They actually like, believe that they live in a patriarchy. I would, I would imagine that most of the older fans do, 110%. The younger ones, I'm guessing, uh, either don't know what that word means yet. Well, they do now. They do now. Which is why that's yeah. so damaging. Yeah. I responded and said, I have seen plenty of cute videos of dads who bring their daughters to Taylor Swift concerts. They're bonding. I get that. But after seeing this, I don't know, man. About the younger fans. Mm -hmm. Like, should a child be brought to this concert to hear and scream a phrase like that. Because it is ideological, no matter what way you swing it. It's, mm -hmm. it's an ideological statement. And there's, that's the reason why it's, it's special for the fans to scream that line. It's the dad's job to then counter it and explain to her why, right. uh, where yeah. she's... Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not society's job to ban these kids from going to this concert. It's the responsibility of good parents to then say, uh, this is where she's right, this is where she's wrong, this is how we agree to disagree. But like, if you're one of these dads and your daughter is, a, is this huge Swifty because that's just what... The, what's happening in the culture right now. Mm -hmm. Should you really be exposing your daughter to that type they likely of language? Don't know, they likely don't know what's going on. It's yeah, not that's like, the it's problem. Not like, it's not I like they're listening kind of the to the point. lyrics ahead of time to... That's the problem, you know. though, is that, you know, they're not aware of these things. Mm -hmm. And this is how an idea like that gets promulgated through the culture, not mm -hmm. through a bunch of, you know, people yeah. in academia. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from. Well, but it, get, it, it gets goes, to that point later. It goes through the pipeline yeah. down to the culture. Hmm. And I just think that's that's kind of sinister. What do you think yeah. radicalizes people more, university or stuff like this? Pop culture. Think so? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I don't even think that people these days, like there's a lot of talk of like, don't, don't send your daughters to college. You're gonna become blue haired feminists, SJWs. But they were likely already thinking that way because they were exposed to it on social media before they even got to college. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. point, they're, they're primed for it and then they get radicalized maybe later on. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like an example of exactly where that starts. Mm -hmm. And some of the reactions to this um, were saying, you know, it's so cool that she was screaming F the patriarchy in front of uh, Prince William and his children. That it's like, you know, the English monarchy is a representation of the patriarch patriarchal system in which we all live. 
Uh, one person said Taylor really led a whole stadium in screaming F the patriarchy in front of one, but two future kings of England. I simply have no choice but to respect that. And uh, they thought that that was really revolutionary yeah. for her. Because <laughs> there's no difference between monarchy and patriarchy, apparently. I mean, I wonder <laughs> uh, what percentage of our audience are radicalized by stuff like this. I think that we also end up in a little bit of a, our own type of ideological echo chamber where we take all this stuff very, very seriously and that there's still at least a portion of the audience that doesn't look at it that deeply. Maybe certainly she would be an example of someone who more than others seems to get people really, really invested in what she has to say. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. I kind of mm -hmm. feel like with most movies and television that it's it's usually not that deep. But obviously here is a very good example of somebody who does get her fans to hang on every word. I mean, yesterday yeah. we were talking about that episode of New Amsterdam that yep. is trying to convince boomers watching network television that yep. racism yep. causes cancer. Or at least in this <laughs> like, case, yeah, that's I mean, that's really where these ideas Start. Start. I mean, I, that, that, that's a good point to be made that maybe the, the reason why so many of them leave college that way is because the ideas are introduced far earlier. Right. Um, yeah. The seeds so are that, planted. So that it's not uh, something that's wholeheartedly new by the time that they get there. Because I would say that, uh, you know, you ever seen those photo examples of like the kids who go to college? It's like their picture from the first day of college and their picture like for the last day of college and they look unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I imagine that as far as like that type of radicalization that happens more at college because it mobilizes people in a different way yeah like i don't know if like uh if a celebrity if celebrities takes on what's going on in israel and palestine lead to as many people going out and protesting as what their college professors takes on that do maybe i, I mean know. as colleges increasingly become majority female mm. there is a strange culture developing where you know maybe all of these like feminist college students think that they are feminists, but they're actually competing for this, you know, decreasing pool of men who are still in academia, who are of a similar social status to them. And that's where hookup culture comes in. But that's that's a whole other can of worms, which she also promotes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that in terms of like pop stars that young women are idolizing, Taylor Swift is not the worst. I mean, there are literal like CIA plants like Sexy Red out there that are much worse than her and much more vulgar and much more on the nose. Isn't that what makes it almost like more sinister though? She's like a yeah, Trojan she's horse. Yeah, kind of disguised as something wholesome mm -hmm. when this is what's going on at her concerts yeah. and mm -hmm. this is just what goes viral um from those concerts because and uh, yeah and all of all of her music is about breakups and turmoil with men and then she stands up and yells at right. the patriarchy and um you know i mean it's her lifestyle choice but it, she is a single woman in her mid-30s who's chosen to not get married or have kids yet and she's huge like this is who all these young women are looking up to it's just like spineless. That trend, that trend of not getting married started long before she became a public. Sure, yeah, yeah I'm but not saying like it's, it's hypocritical she because that. she's clearly obsessed with men. Yeah. And all of her fans are obsessed with men and she's constantly thinking and singing and writing about made them. Her rich. And like her ex-boyfriends made her rich literally. <laughs> <laughs> indirectly but yeah. yeah and she's trying to act like she's some kind of symbol of female empowerment mm -hmm. when like all of her music is centered around men it's very spineless i think and uh you know what else male swifties are spineless there was this awful awful video of men at a Taylor Swift concert screaming along to her lyrics <laughs> and it just gave me a turbo ick like Bad. Beta. Ew, 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 ew. Like I, when I saw that, I was just, I was icked. That, that is a turbo ick for me. Yes. Uh, is there anything more soy than grown men going <laughs> to a Taylor Swift concert? I can't think of anything. I, I really can't think of anything more soy than See, that. See, this is why this is why uh, the type of internet criticism you give matters. Do you remember the video of the dad who went with his daughters and was like singing along, and everyone was giving him crap, and people were like, "Well, he's taking his kids to go and That's see okay, this concert." Then. That's vastly different than this. Then yes. this, like yeah. these guys, are probably going to a Taylor Swift concert, thinking that they're 
going to get a bunch of female attention for being male Swifties. I think Taylor Swift is funding all of the the evil foods that are dropping men's testosterone so that she can make more money. <laughs> that's my cons- that's my conspiracy. Yeah, the the testosterone crisis in our in our country cannot be underestimated. Well, her, her private jet's probably polluting the the water. <laughs> <laughs> very po- very yeah. possibly true. Yeah, very possibly exactly. true. Uh, she's also a demon, apparently. Yeah, there was this moment also at a recent concert of hers where her her big screen glitched, mm-hmm. and you can see her demon face. Oh. <laughs> Look at this shit. Coincidence? <laughs> I think, I think not. not. Possessed. Okay. Uh, what what do you think about the the discussion around whether? He, you know, because whenever Taylor Swift comes up, people argue about whether you should be talking about it at all. And certainly there's an argument to be had between conservatives because there are plenty of women uh, in conservative spaces that are fond of Taylor Swift that then have to justify liking her all the time. And I always find that discussion really, really funny because uh, the Internet you know, being what it is, Twitter being what it is specifically, you don't need a reason to criticize or talk about anything. What's in the news is what's in the news. But it's it really interesting what people choose to give the pass. Most of them. This is why yeah. I'm. This is why most of the time I tell people that like, look, I'm not gonna boycott Hollywood. I'm gonna watch. What I'm gonna watch. What I'm gonna like what I'm gonna like. I'll criticize what I feel needs to be criticized and take it as it comes. But if you're one of the people who's consistently like, we need to boycott this. We need to stop doing this. And then you have that one thing that for some reason just seems you know you can't. Ju- you don't know why. You like it, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But if you are one of the people that's pretty consistent about we need to boycott, we need to stop doing this, we need to stop supporting this, you're going to be asked pointed questions is why this person gets a pass. And I find that pretty fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to boycott Taylor Swift or anything. Even if I did, it would make zero effect on her bottom line. Exactly. Right. But to pretend that she has a totally positive and harmless influence on the women who idolize her is equally idiotic. Mm-hmm than thinking you can take down her career by not streaming her music. Yeah. Like, at least point out the flaws where they are, right? Mm-hmm. That, that would just be intellectually honest. Yeah, because of the opinions I have of her that you know I expressed, that's why I used to never listen to her music. Like, when, my, when I got here, you're like, you listen to Taylor Swift, I do, but that's in the last six months, because I was like, I, I can't stand her because I find her like you said, spineless, but also I feel like her lyrics low key could like brainwash you. I don't know. I don't want to listen frequencies. to music that's all. Yeah, the frequencies, the satanic the, percussions. The, <laughs> the frequencies of the T-Swift <laughs> might turn me into like a man hater subconsciously. You know? Are you feeling it happening to you? I haven't listened to her yet today, She, You, so you said she's me. in your daily rotation. She I'm, is. I'm not saying she's she not talented. Yeah. Like she's, she's talented, she's good at business, she's good at marketing herself. And that's exactly why you should pay attention to the type of message she's sending. I mm-hmm. would love for her to do like a, like a behind the scenes about her business dealings. That to me is the interesting stuff. I want to. I want to see. There's definitely right? going to be a biopic about yeah. Taylor Swift. Like I, I would rather learn <laughs> about her about her Taylor Swift, the ruthless businesswoman, yeah. rather than her music, which doesn't obviously doesn't interest me. There's all this talk about how Sabrina Carpenter is currently being uh, prepped to become the next Taylor Swift level pop star. And we're all being, I guess, you know, conditioned to accept that currently. Mm -hmm. She is Taylor Swift's underling. She is touring with her, um, opening for her. And she's gonna be, they say, the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw some conspiracy that says they believe that Spotify owns Sabrina Carpenter's music. Yeah. And that's why she's being pushed so heavily. I mean, she's a former mm-hmm. Disney kid mm-hmm. doing her bad girl era. Mm-hmm. It's not something we haven't seen before. Take note, JoJo. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I think at least Sabrina Carpenter has a little bit more of a, a sex appeal than Taylor Swift. Mm. And it's cool to see uh, at least, you know, someone who's not Amazonian. <laughs> <laughs> being in that yeah. iconic role but she is even more vulgar um, <laughs> she's known for doing these outros to her songs that are like she, she just makes up a rhyme about like some sexual innuendo okay and she does that a lot and and we also talked about her back when she made that music video in a church without getting mm, authorization for okay. it um yeah. 
So she's, you know, she has her sinister moments as well. She's just not as famous. So she's yep. not going to get the same level of backlash as you were saying to me before we were on air. Yeah. Um, but once she is at that level, she's, I'm, I predict she's going to get just as much backlash. Yeah. At that, at that point. I feel like the reason Taylor is so big, though, is because she's super squeaky clean. I'd be surprised yeah. if someone like with that kind of reputation could fill Taylor Swift's shoes. Um, I feel like you need someone that where like parents would be 100% on board with them. Yeah, but the, the reason that the, t the parents are getting on board is because the, uh, I don't know, the, the more sinister elements of her music are not as obvious. Mm -hmm. Like, right. she's, she's not twerking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's not, for the most part, cursing in her music. She's not singing vulgar lyrics about sex. Mm -hmm. So parents just think, well, this is appropriate, but they don't look any further than that. And that's on them. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.